Some are skin care, melanoma, how to prevent it, treat it, and also spot it. Lindsay Idaluka is in the newsroom for us tonight with all those answers. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, Chris. Thank you very much. All right. Well, this 44 is tonight. We're talking about summer skin care. And even though the sun might not be out right now, it will come out eventually this summer. And of course, prom season right now, teens looking to hop into tanning beds. And well, over 3 million people are diagnosed with skin cancer every single year. The National Cancer Institute reports it's the most common form of cancer in the United States. There are different forms of skin cancer, of course, mild to severe deadliest by far being melanoma with more than 76,500 cases estimated to be diagnosed in this year alone. So before you head out in the summer sun, whether it be to a beach, a poolside, there are some things that you can do to prevent getting skin cancer and melanoma. We'll have a panel of experts in our newsroom tonight here to take all of your calls and answer your questions about skin cancer. You can call us at 846-0240 for all of your calls. And of course, if you have any questions that you want me to ask live on air, you you can tweet them at us, hashtag 44. Back to you, Chris. All right, thank you, Lindsay, for that. And more on how to spot melanoma and ways to prevent it coming up a little bit later on in the show. I admit, may have a few questions. Welcome back, everyone, on this Monday. It's the 44 Summer Skin Care Melanoma. We want to know how to prevent it, treat it, and also spot it. Lindsay Idaluka is in the newsroom live now with those answers tonight and more. Lindsay? Hi, Chris. How are you doing? All right. Well, right now we're going to interview Dr. Richard Arenas, and he is the surgical oncologist for Bay State Medical Center. He's actually on the phone right now. What? He's taking some, <laughs> taking some questions, but he is the surgical oncologist, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what melanoma looks like, different kinds. There are basal cells and squamous cells, which are more mild forms of cancer, and then of course melanoma, which is the deadliest kind. So. How you doing? Thank you for Good. joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Yes. All right. So first, I kind of want to talk to you about melanoma is the deadliest. Everybody's everybody's heard of that. So what are some of the what are some of the signs? How can you can you tell uh, the difference between melanoma and a mild form of skin cancer? Well, I think melanoma is probably a type of skin cancer that we typically look at people who have moles or what we call nevi. And I think that one of the things we're trying to educate the people about is is that if you have a mole. Are there certain characteristics that would tell you that maybe there's concern that it may be just more than a mole, maybe a melanoma? So if you see a situation where a mole is changing, so if it's changing color, it's got variations in color, if the borders are becoming more and more irregular, or if a situation that's getting bigger, so if it typically I say if it's bigger than, say, um, an eraser head on a pencil, that may be a concern that it might be something more than just a, a benign or a simple mole. Um, melanoma doesn't always have to develop where there's a mole. It can develop as a, a separate skin cancer of itself. There are other types of skin cancers, but I think we're being more careful not to say that, you know, obviously all skin cancer is important, but melanoma being a type of skin cancer that can potentially spread into your body, it's probably one of the more lethal kinds of skin cancer. Okay, so would you suggest that people do self-checks of themselves, or is, there, is this something that they definitely should go see a board-certified dermatologist for? I think that um, it's important to educate everyone that you can do skin checkups on your own. It's important that you, you know, also have someone close to you that can check those areas of you that you can't see because sometimes it's not very easy. It's not really that we're supposed to tell them how to diagnose skin cancer. What we do tell them is, is that are there certain things that are changing? So if you have a skin lesion, like a mole, and if it is changing, bring it to the attention of your doctor because your doctor may say, look, we better get to see it, you to see a dermatologist because it's probably going to be a dermatologist or someone who is trained in skin diseases who is going to actually make that diagnosis. And many times the diagnosis is based on a biopsy that's done of the skin itself. But I think it's important that, you know, people be their own advocate because if they see something that just doesn't seem to be the same, if it is changing and they're not sure about that skin lesion, bring it to the attention of their doctor and say, I really want it checked. All right, absolutely. Thank you very much, Dr. Arenas from Bay State Medical Center. And coming back, we are going to have a story about a melanoma survivor. Chris, back to you. All right, thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, we understand uh, the story of one health teacher who was actually shocked to find out that she had melanoma. It could really happen to any of us. And now let's get a final. Good Monday evening, everyone. I'm Chris Pisano, and tonight's 40 Force focuses on summer skin care, specifically the deadliest kind of skin cancer, melanoma. 
Lindsay Ida Luca is back in the newsroom tonight, and she got a chance to speak with a melanoma survivor recently. Lindsay. That's right, Chris. I did. Melanoma survivor. She's actually a health teacher at South Hadley High School, Tanya Shinowski. And she told me that she never actually had a lot of outdoor sunlight, but it was the indoor tanning beds that really, really did not help. And then when you're done, go ahead and put a nice coat of lotion on. And As a health there, teacher, Tanya Shinowski never thought that she would receive such a phone call. A couple weeks later, I ended up calling me and told me I had melanoma. And he told me right over the phone. And I was like, and he asked me, he goes, do you know what that is? And I said, of course I, I know what it is. I'm a health teacher. But my mind just kind of went blank. And I was like, oh my God, I have melanoma. How can I have melanoma? Tanya decided to visit her dermatologist after noticing a spot on the back of her arm. Kind of had a sick feeling in my stomach that something wasn't right, so I kind of pushed him to test it. Tanya told me that she was unsure how something like this could have happened because she didn't stay outside in the sun very often. But what Tanya didn't realize was that the risk of melanoma is 75% higher for people who are exposed to UV radiation from tanning beds, which she said she regularly used. I ended up finding out that it was, you know, a low stage and they just had to go in, remove the chunk and the margins and um, ended up being okay. Overall, this whole situation, I would 100% say it changed my life. You can go ahead and step in. So much so that she eventually opened up her own spray tanning business called Mist Spray after buying her own professional machine and lots of trial and error on herself and her friends. She realized this was the best way to get that golden tan that many crave and stay cancer free. I realized I had quite the passion for it. I absolutely love doing it. I like making people look good and feel better about themselves in a healthy way. All right, well, Tanya is actually here with us right now, at one of our panel of experts. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Thank you for having me. All right, so Tanya, you actually had melanoma, we saw in the story, and then it inspired you to open up your own spray tanning business. So talk to me a little bit about that, about a little bit about what you do. Sure, no problem. Uh, my mother always told me to embrace my pale and Polish skin, and I never could. So I realized since I couldn't go in the tanning beds that I needed to find you know, a safe way to tan, so I decided to open up a spray tan business. Um, to make a long story short, I had, you know, just ended up buying a professional machine because going and spray tanning all the time is very expensive. Um, couldn't really do it to myself all the time, so I started spraying all my friends, and I realized, oh my gosh, I really, really like this. I grew such a passion to having it, I said, why not just do a business out of it? So, um, to make a long story short, I went and did all my training, everything I needed to do um, to learn about this skin and what to do and not to do when spray tanning people. So. I guess here I am today. All right, and one of the things I wanted to ask you is a lot of people think spray tanning means that you're orange. You look fabulous. So talk, talk a little bit about that, the different colors and how you can, you can get a nice golden tan without getting in a tanning bed. Oh, of course. Um, your spray tan should never, ever turn orange. If you ever turn orange, the tech did the wrong, used the wrong stuff on you. DHA is what turns your skin a certain color. What it happens is that it comes in all different levels from 6, 8, 10, 12, all the way up to 20. If you're somebody who has light skin and blue eyes and I use a 20 on you, you're going to turn orange. And what that happens is I tell people your skin's almost throwing up on you because it's too much for your skin type. Um, so it's really, really important that when you go to a spray tan person that they know what they're doing and they know what DHA, lo DHA level to use on you so that you don't turn orange. Um, technology and the solutions have come such a long way. You should always achieve a nice, golden, healthy glow. Absolutely. And right now it's prom season, so there might be teens out there watching who might want to get in touch with you or might want a nice spray tan. So how can they get in touch with you? Sure. They can text me, call me at my cell phone number is 860-485-4968. Um, also on Instagram and Twitter, it's Miss underscore spray. Um, I also have a Facebook page where if they just search me under Miss Spray, they can find me. Okay. And, you know, teens think that they can't get the same tan in a tanning bed as they can spray tanning. So talk a little bit more about that. How, how important it is. You know, you want to look great at prom, obviously, but you want to be healthy, too. Yeah, everybody wants color. Um, spray tans will ask, last you anywhere from five days up until two weeks. Um, you know, from my experience from going into a tanning bed, I would have to go a lot. I would have to go almost every single day to get that, that color. Once you go once, you can get a nice golden tan for that, you know, that first time that you go that will last almost all, like, up to two weeks. So um, in the long run, doing the spray tan will last the color, you know, so much longer and keep your skin healthier and, and while doing so. All right. Thank you very much. Again, Tanya Shinowski, she is a melanoma survivor. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Dr. John McCann, another Bay State medical oncologist. Chris, back to you. All right. Thanks, Lindy Idaluka. Live from our newsroom with our 44 Summer Skin Care. Thanks.
cool summer like music and summer skin care is the topic of our 40 force tonight. We are talking about skin cancer and its most deadly form, melanoma. Lindsay Adeluca is live in our newsroom now. She joins us with more. Lindsay? Thanks, Chris. That's right. We are going to talk about melanoma tonight. That's why we're standing here with Dr. John McCann. John, thanks for joining us. We sure. appreciate it. Thank and you. you are an oncologist at Bay State Medical Center, right? Correct. All right. So um, you were just saying you deal with advanced cases of melanoma, giving them medicine and stuff like that. So talk a little bit about that. Well, we've made a lot of advances in treating uh, melanoma. Melanoma is a uh, cancer that uh, has a tendency to spread, and that's why it can be such a serious illness. Uh, and for many years, we really didn't have a lot of great options for melanoma when it had spread. But just in the last few years, we've really developed some newer techniques and approaches to treating melanoma. Uh, one of the main ways we now treat melanoma is to activate someone's immune system, you know, the person's own immune system, to attack the melanoma. So instead of using traditional chemotherapy, we actually use drugs that can stimulate the immune system, and the immune system then leads to a fighting the melanoma. Okay, so those are severe cases. So there's different treatments then for different severity. Talk a little bit about those. Well, typically we like to find melanoma at an early stage, meaning when it's localized, and that's why it's really important for people if they notice an abnormality on their skin, they're not sure what it is, they should get it checked out because we want it removed. That's the ideal way to treat melanoma. Um, but there's also different stages of melanoma, and since it does have a tendency to spread, uh, we sometimes find it spread to lymph nodes near where the melanoma started on the skin, and that's a somewhat more severe uh, stage of melanoma, and that's typically treated with surgery and sometimes preventative medicine. And then there's other times when we find it spread to different areas of the body, and that's when we have to use medications to get through the whole system to attack the melanoma. Okay, so backtracking a little bit, before you even need treatment, what are things that people can do to prevent ever getting melanoma? Well, probably the most important thing is to focus on kids because we believe that uh, severe burns, blistering burns that a lot of us got when we were kids are the most significant risk for developing melanoma in the future. And there can be decades of time from when you have injury to your skin and a melanoma develops. So I think focusing on protecting kids from the sun, wearing sunscreen all the time, avoiding direct sunlight, that's really important and not just for older people but really for young people. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. John McCann from Bay State Medical. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. And if you have any questions tonight, feel free. Lines are open. You can call us 846-0240. Or if you have any questions that you want read live on air, you can tweet them at us using the hashtag 44s. Chris, back to you. All right. Thank you, Lindsay, for that. And coming up at 6, a local dermatologist talks about an irregular case of melanoma and who is most susceptible. Melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer, and summer skin care is our 44th topic tonight. Lindsay Idaluka is back in our newsroom now, and Lindsay, you just spoke with a doctor today who apparently gave you a pretty interesting story about a patient with melanoma. That is right, Chris. Today I spoke with Dr. Yolanda Lindsay, a dermatologist in Chicopee. She had a patient who she said didn't have the typical signs of skin cancer, but she had a mole on her face. She had actually had it for 15 years until she started seeing some changes in it. I sat down with Dr. Lindsay today, and she walked me through what the American Academy of Dermatology suggests that people should watch out for, or their ABCDs of melanoma. I'm going to look through this magnifying lens here. According to Dr. Lindsay, knowing your ABCs pays off far beyond your pre-K years. The ABCDs of melanoma. So A stands for asymmetry. So if one side does not look like the other side, that could be concerning. B is for borders. So if the borders are now irregular, they're not perfectly round, it kind of looks jagged or scalloped, those are things to look out for. Um, C is for color. So variations in color. So say the lesion was once brown and now it has parts brown, black, and red, multiple colors, those are things to look out for. And then D is diameter. So if the diameter is bigger than we say six millimeters, which is the size of a pencil eraser, so that's a little thing that people can remember, um, the ABC, ABCDs of melanoma. These may be typical signs, but the biggest one is the fifth letter in the alphabet, 
E. If your moles ever evolve or change over time, it's best that you get them checked immediately. The patient that I recently saw, she had a mole on her face for about 15 years, and she noticed that it changed. It became more raised. It became a little bit more itchy, so she came in to have that seen. After a routine biopsy, it was confirmed that the mole was a unique case of non-pigmented melanoma. Dr. Lindsay says mm -hmm. that these cases are the ones that are most difficult to spot with none of the obvious signs. But bottom line is, if you ever suspect anything abnormal with any spots on your body, it's always safest to have a board-certified dermatologist check it out as soon as possible. I also talked to Dr. Lindsay today, and she told me that SPF over 30 and clothing are the best ways to protect yourself from melanoma outdoors and, of course, avoid any indoor tanning altogether. And, of course, if you have any questions, we have an expert of panel, or excuse me, we have a panel of experts standing by tonight to answer all of your questions. Phone lines are open. You can call 846-0240, or if you want us to ask any questions live over the air, you can tweet at us using hashtag 44. Chris. All right, thanks, Lindsay. And we will have one last question and answer segment for you a little bit later on. So again, if you have a question you want to be answered live on the air, be sure to tweet them using hashtag 44, and we'll do our best. Have a few minutes. And welcome back on this Monday night, everyone. Summer skin care is our 44th topic tonight. Lindsay Ida-Luca is in our newsroom one last time with the big wrap-up. Lindsay? That's right, Chris. Thank you. I'm standing here with Megan Rothschild. She is with the Melanoma Foundation of New England. Megan, thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah. thank you for having me. All right, so you've had a lot of questions tonight um, about SPF, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, there's, a bit there's been a lot of questions about the level of toxic ingredients in SPF. So there's a couple important things to know about sunscreen. Is First, you want to be using an SPF of 30, and you want to reapply it every two hours. And if you're concerned about the ingredients, that are actually in the SPF. There's a really great website called the Cosmetic Data, or it's CosmeticDatabase.com that's actually organized by the Environmental Working Group, and that will help you. You can actually track all the ingredients in your sunscreen and make sure that they have a certain level of toxicity. They're, they're low on the scale. Okay. So that's a really great way for people to be able to check out not just sunscreen, but all of your products, lotions, makeups, anything that you're putting on your skin. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about what does the Melanoma Foundation of New England do? What are you guys all about? Yeah, so we are an organization. We're obviously all over New England. We, um, we do a lot of public awareness programs. We're in the school systems with our Your Skin Is In program, um, asking teens to be skin safe, not, not tan intentionally. Um, we do offer support groups for people who are recently diagnosed or people who are caregivers, um, which is really great. That's our Billy's Buddies program. And we also offer a great program called the Skinny on Skin. Skin, which helps train hairdressers and estheticians and beauty industry professionals to be able to spot suspicious looking lesions on the head, neck, and scalp. Very cool. Any other questions that were big tonight? A lot of people asking about, or it was really about the sunscreen. You know, we had some people call in asking about something specific on their skin, and what we always say is, you really need to see a dermatologist, someone who specializes in this, or at least your primary care physician, if you have an immediate concern about something on your skin, because we certainly can't help you really over the phone. But yep. you know, see your doctor for that. All right. Thank you very much, yeah. Megan Rothschild from the Melanoma Foundation of New England. And I told you we had a question earlier from John Bach on. Twitter, he was asking if there were more can cancer uh, patients today, skin cancer patients today, than there were about 30 years ago. And he asked if it was because the sun was stronger, and now we're hearing that it's the doctors are telling us that it's because there's more um, direct sunlight. People are out in the sun longer than they were, say, 20, 30 years ago. So thank you very much for that. And phone lines are open until 6.30 tonight. So if you have a question, please feel free to call 846-0240. Chris? All right, thank you, Lindsay. And if you missed any of our segments tonight, you can always watch them on our website, WGGB.com.